Hello and Guru Scott. On this video, I'm going to be building a horizontal boring machine so I can bore holes into wood from the side, such as this, so I can either put in dowels or perhaps insert nuts or whatever I want to do, and I'll be able to do it from the side. So I have an old compound milling table, it's X and Y, and I'm going to use it as my basis. I'm going to go up to the store real quick, go grab a few items, and I'll be right back and show you how we're, what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've gone up to the store and gotten a few items. I got a board to mount this on, and I also got some screws, some hardened steel washers, and some T-nuts to mount it. I also on Amazon ordered a Z-axis that I can drive up and down. And then I got some felt pads to put all this on so it won't scratch anything. And I'm also possibly going to use some heavy-duty um, 3M mounting tape so that my parts once I put them on there and get them all squared so they won't move. So what I'm going to do is start marking the board using a uh, square, a framing square, and get things set up and drilled and then I'll come back and we'll start the assembly. Okay, so I have the board ready now for the compound milling table. I put these T-nuts in and the screws will go through from the other side. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and clean up the bottom of the compound milling table put some double stick tape down because I don't want it to be able to move at all once I have it square with the z-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and get that all set up and we'll come right back and I'll show you what it's going to look like. At this point we have the double stick tape along here and again this is just to keep it from moving on the table once I have it set. So I'll go ahead and peel these off and I'll attach the bottom and then we're going to come back and see what it looks like. All right, so we've mounted this. We have it parallel with the board. We have it stuck down, fastened down, and we'll be ready to move to the next step. So um, that's gonna be in a couple of days because uh, actually I'm just finished for the day. So we'll be back and we'll do some more work on this later. I found this Z-axis on Amazon. It's made by Sureline. I believe it's made from one of their many milling machines. So I've decided to adapt it to my machine here for my side boring machine to make it my z-axis holder. So what I've done is I've mounted it to a board and I'm going to pivot this axis right here along this axis here and then I'll be able to lock it down and I'll be able to adjust it so I can cant it back and forth this way and that way I'll be able to get this um, axis in alignment with this XY. So I'm going to flip it over and show you how I'm going to do that. I found some conical washers on Zorro Tools. They're called, um, they're under part number 5, R is in Roy, Y is in yellow, 96. And these conical washers look like this. I'm not sure if you can really see them. But I was planning to stack some conical washers along this axis. And the way I was going to do it is facing the cones to each other. And this should allow this to pivot at this pivot point. And then here I have some um, Allen type screws that go in here. And they're going to allow me to adjust it up and down. And I'll be able to lock it into place with these four corners. And hopefully that's going to give me a very square to the X, Y, Z axis. And um, so I'm going to get that all put together. And then I'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so now what I've done is I've installed this uh, Z-axis and the way I did it was, as I would mentioned previously, as I have it on this board that pivots and I have these adjustment screws. So I have two of them that you can adjust here and here with an Allen key and then you can lock it down. I also have this um, so it's got some extra resistance behind it so that it won't flex. And I've checked it and I have it all set up right now so that the everything's square with this axis. And then if I go this way, it's square with the other axis. So now all I have to do is mount a drill here. So um, let me go grab a couple things and I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work out. Okay, so what I've come up with for the uh, drilling part is I have this old Black & Decker drill. The only problem is it does have a little bit of play here in the head. I may have to replace that bearing, but I don't know. It'll probably work fine for what I'm going to use it for. So I've built this board that has um, adjustments here. 
So I have X, Y, Z, and then sort of pitch roll and yaw here so I can get sort of precise. And I'll put a dial indicator on here and we'll see how accurate this actually is. But this should allow me to adjust this up and down relative to what I want to drill into, and then in and out and side to side. So I'm going to build this um, fixture up, and then I'll come back and we're going to mount it and try it out. At this point, I have the drill actually mounted to the Z axis, and I installed a runout gauge so I can measure the runout in this uh, parallel direction. So if I run this, the uh, runout is actually really super awesome. So it looks like it's pretty flat in that direction. So now all I need to do is check the parallelism this way as well. So I got to figure out a way to do that and I'll come right back and we'll do that. To measure uh, flatness in this direction, I've set up the dial indicator to go along this piece I just have sitting on here, but it's sitting flat. So um, I checked it and it's absolutely very, very perfect. Couldn't be better. So I'm actually going to put a drill bit in and take a piece of scrap wood and let's drill something. All right, at this point I'm ready to try a test drilling. So I have a old scrap piece of lumber fastened down and I have a foot pedal to control my drill. This might get a little loud, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try this here and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna bring this back. I didn't put a drill stop on because I'm just testing this out. So I have a wooden dowel here. Uh, I need to bring it back a little further. And let's see if that would fit in there. And yes, it would. So there we go. Um, that's the gist of this side boring tool. So I'm finished with it and I guess I'll try using it and see how it works out. So thanks for watching. Tschüss.